Israel Finkelstein is a leading figure in the archaeology and history of ancient Israel. Over 40 years of fieldwork and research, he has helped to change the way archaeology is conducted, the Bible is interpreted, and the history of Israel is reconstructed. I sat down with Israel over several sessions to talk about how a lifetime of work has informed the story of ancient Israel. All right, Israel, welcome back to the Albright Institute to continue our conversation. Always a pleasure to be here. All right, let's get started. Last time we dealt with the collapse of the Late Bronze Age and the subsequent uh, settling down in the highlands uh, across the 12th century. Let's pick up with that point because we're seeing a population increase in the highlands and kind of we know the future of that story is to ultimately get to the northern kingdom of Israel. So let's talk a little bit about that process and how long does it take to get to the point of the rise of a territorial entity called Israel? Yes, this is the question. We need now to discuss the first Israelite entity in the highlands after discussing the settlement process. And here, when we ask the question of the first Israel, we uh, need to remember the following. First of all, we, need the, we have the evidence for the Merneptah Stili, Israel, a group of people living somewhere in Canaan, probably uh, in the highlands west of the Jordan because of the settlement process there. This is around the, the late 13th century, close to 1200 BC. And then we have a gap of about 250 years, and we have Israel again as in the northern kingdom of Israel, the territorial entity starting in the late 10th century. So basically the question is, can we identify something in between? Can we trace something in between, between 1200, the Merneptah Israelites, and let's say 940, 930 BC, the Northern Kingdom, that something should be the earliest Israel. Well, we've seen this pattern before, haven't we? We talked about the late Bronze Age in Canaan. Uh, we specifically saw the kingdom of Shechem in the Northern Highland. Uh, should we draw any parallels between this late Bronze Age kingdom and what we're seeing archeologically? Sure, we need to draw the parallels, but this makes the situation is even more complicated because then the question is, why should the territorial formation named Shechem become Israel? So we are in a situation that we have to attack this issue from different directions. First of all, explain which entity can be described as the earliest Israel, and then ask the question, why was the name changed? Okay, so I guess we better look at the archaeology here. How do we take the archaeological angle at this question? Yeah, we need to look at archaeology, but we can also say a word about uh, the biblical memory or the biblical tradition, maybe better to say tradition. The biblical tradition is that the first center of the Israelites in the highlands after the conquest, quote-unquote, of the land was at Shiloh, which is a site not far from Shechem, located about 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers south of Shechem. So what can we say about Shiloh? And we need indeed to turn to archaeology because the, with the Bible you always can say that the tradition reflects later centuries. So it is safer to go with archaeology at least first. Archaeology tells us a lot about, about Shiloh. I excavated there many years ago and I think that it was a fascinating excavation with the wonderful results. We know the following. We know that the history of Shiloh is sort of similar to the history of the settlement history in the highlands, which means Shiloh is big in the middle bones. There is a big wave of settlement in the middle bones. Shiloh is weak in the late bones. There is a decline in the highlands in the late bones. And Shiloh prospers again in the Iron One. And there's this wave of settlement, we spoke about it, that the wave of settlement that makes early Israel in the Iron One. So in the middle bones, Shiloh is a very peculiar site. It is a, an artificial hill with huge support walls. Behind them fields, which create some sort of a platform on the top of the hill. For what? For a palace, for a temple. There is no evidence for habitation. So it's not a town. It's something else, something different, a fort or a palace or a temple standing alone. 
the nearby major site in the Middle Bronze Age is Shechem, a few kilometers away. And then there is a decline in the Late Bronze, but evidence for cult activity there. And then the Iron One. And the Iron One is some sort of similar to the Middle Bronze in the sense that it's a very large site, relatively speaking, about two and a half uh, hectares, no habitation, but evidence for public construction, big storage places, big storehouses. So again, we need to ask what's going on here? What's the nature of the site, which is not a town, not a village? So we need to understand it, I think, together with Shechem. So is this the end of Shiloh at the end of the Iron One? Oh, no. We need to remember one more uh, piece of evidence that Shiloh was destroyed uh, at the end of the 11th century. We are speaking here radiocarbon dates. So we are on solid grounds. There is some sort of a gap of activity at Shiloh apparently in the beginning of the Iron II, which would mean in the beginning of the 10th century or so. And then there is a resumption of activity, apparently cult activity, in the later phases of the Iron II, in the 9th and 8th centuries BC. And we know this from current excavations at the site, which uh, revealed the uh, two uh, stone altars typical of the 9th and 8th centuries BC. Okay, so you made a case that Shiloh is some sort of Iron I uh, cultic center and it's probably connected to Iron One Shechem. Must be. And do you want to make a parallel to the Late Bronze Age and the Middle Bronze Age in which you have the same situation, a major city-state with the territorial coverage at Shechem and uh, some sort of large cultic site standing alone at Shiloh? So, yeah, so first of all, I would say that we need to reconstruct the following. There is apparently evidence in the Iron One for a territorial entity with many settlements, uh, with the, its hub at uh, Shechem and the temple uh, place uh, at Shiloh. And it is definitely similar to the situation in the Middle Bronze Age. So this brings the question of the transition from the Late Bronze to the Iron One, and also the transition in the name, or to put it differently, when we speak about the Iron One territorial entity, I don't know whether we can still, we can already call it kingdom, but some sort of territorial entity, whether the name was Shechem, makes sense, no? Or whether we have a new name, Israel. At this point, we are trying to figure out what the nature of this territorial entity is that's based on Shechem Shiloh. Uh, we know that the kingdom of Israel is emerging shortly thereafter. Uh, how are we going to attack this question for the Iron One, however? And as you've suggested before, maybe we should look at the name of Israel because it does seem to give away the name of another deity, right? Yes, the name, of, the name is very instructive. It's very uh, interesting. Israel, there is a, a big debate about it. I'm not going to go into the details. Let me just say that it is connected to the worship of the deity El, the old, you know, ancient deity of the land. And uh, it is instructive to look at the locations of the worship of El because they all concentrate around Shiloh. There is the site of Bethel, the house of El, which is uh, to the south of Shiloh, not so far. Then there is the tradition in the Bible of worship of El at Shechem, the house of El Brit, for instance, may come from later centuries, but may preserve old tradition. And Shechem is not so far to the north. And then we have Penuel, the place uh, connected to the Jacob cycle in the book of Genesis, and Penuel is a little bit to the east across the Jordan, but not so far as well. So just make a circle and you see that Shiloh is in the center. Not only that, there is another piece of evidence that uh, needs to be brought here and put into the, into the part. And this is the genealogy of Manasseh, the tribe of Manasseh in the Bible, and the Samaria Ostraka. They date to around 800 BC. And in both places, there is a reference to a clan named Asriel. And this Asriel 
is located in the area between Shechem and Shiloh. Exactly in the area between Shechem and Shiloh. Why, how do we know this? We know this from the names of villages connected to Asriel in the Samaria Ostraka. So the French scholar Lemaire had already made this uh, connection many years ago between Asriel and Israel. So my question is the following. Was Shiloh the center of worship of El? And the center of this Israel formation, Israel formation, earliest Israel formation in the Iron One. Now we have another problem because the name of the God of Israel as we know it later is Yahweh, it's not El. So something is happening in the transition with the deity as well. So putting aside the possibility of, of uh, syncretism, uh, we are not going to enter into this here. Uh, yes, not only that, also the tradition of Shiloh. The tradition of uh, Shiloh in the Bible is connected to the Ark. And the Ark of the Covenant, if you wish, the Ark is the Ark of the God of Israel, which means the Ark of Yahweh. Although in some places it is also described as the, God, as the Ark of Elohim, but still. And uh, there is good reason to suggest that the memory, for instance, in the book of Jeremiah, go to my place at Shiloh and see what I have done to it, is also related to this later Shiloh. And indeed, the earliest evidence for the worship of the God of Israel, Yahweh, in ancient Israel, and especially, specifically in the Northern Kingdom, is in the ninth century. How do we know this? We know this from the names of the monarchs of the Northern Kingdom. The name of the God of Israel appears only in, around the middle of the ninth century, with the, during the Omri dynasty, with the names, with the name, for instance, Joram, carrying the component of the God of Israel. And then there is in the Mesha Stili the evidence for the temple of Yahweh at Nebo, taken over by the Moabites according to the inscription. So what do we have here? We have here this transition, possibly, from Shiloh as a center of worship of El, possibly, to a change uh, after a short gap at Shiloh in the 10th century and the beginning of the 9th century, perhaps, to a center of worship of the God of Israel, Yahweh. And the biblical tradition is mainly on the second. But the first one may give us a clue on the earliest territorial formation named Israel in the Iron One in the 11th century BC. Okay, let's, let's summarize what we've done so far during this conversation, beginning with the rise and the settlement in the highlands. I think that we can say the following, that uh, in order to trace the earliest formation, territorial formation, named Israel, we need to look at the area of Shechem. This is also the main concentration of settlements. And we need to look at the site of Shiloh, which is apparently a very important cult place related to the center at Shechem. And uh, I think that we need also in parallel to concentrate on the name Israel, on the locations of the cult of El, the worship of El, and later on the transition to the worship of the God of Israel. And when we wrap all this together, I think that we can say that there is a possibility, at least, that this Iron One uh, formation, 11th century formation in the Highlands, centered at Shechem, with the, a cult place at Shiloh, can be described as, as the earliest Israel, which would mean that there is a change from the name Shechem to the name Israel with the collapse of the Bronze Age in the 12th century BC. But of course, we don't know for sure. And we're still left with a small gap, aren't we, between the destruction of Iron One Shiloh and the moment that we actually get the name Israel in our sources. We are still left uh, with some doubts. The first doubt is about this Shiloh formation, Shechem Shiloh formation, the name of this 
uh, formation in the Iron One. And the second doubt, of course, even if it was called Israel, what happens between the destruction in the late 11th century and the rise of the Northern Kingdom? And I think that we will need to discuss this in the future. All right, we will. That's it for now. Thanks again for coming, and I'll see you next time. Sure.